Hello, Mr. Leonardo da Vinci. This is your midnight wake-up call. Bail, bail, bail. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project 2, Buried in Time. We have returned for our final trip into Chichen Itza because we're actually able to finish it this time. However, before we're able to actually get down back into the caverns below, we actually have to repeat the same puzzle with the calendar, which is actually gives me a good opportunity to show you the pretty much the simplest way of doing this. It doesn't even actually need to actually use the translate bio chip whatsoever, but for sake of explanation, I'm gonna use it. So remember that we have all of the various dates, and one of them is for the God of Fire. So putting three tree onto the calendar will give you access. However, as we can see that the initial position of it is four tree. So all we need to do is put it up once. One click and the puzzle is done. Either this is just something that developers just kind of put together, like I would have liked it for it not to be this simple, but if you're speeding through this game, this is how you're going to do it. So now that that's done, we actually still need to go up and get the ceramic bowl once again. Alright, let's head back into the caverns. Alright, back into the caves. Now if you remember from last time we were here, Arthur mentioned that this was the proving grounds for supplicants of the priesthood in order to get them prepared for their journey into the underworld. Because if you remember, um, the Mayan afterlife is not a very happy place. Only sacrifices and children were allowed into heaven, and everybody else went to the underworld and had to pass through trials. The Mayans have set up, well, doors. Four doors have been put into this cavern, and we have to complete all of them in order to complete the time zone. Maybe those markings on the door are clues of some sort. We should translate the inscriptions in the lintel above the door, and in the headdress on the figure on the right. Any information we could find would really be helpful, Gage. The inscriptions will help you more than I can. I really think you should translate them. Which I will. He's pointing to this, these two bits of marking here, so this is where you're going to get your use out of your translate biochip. So first off is this thing. Only those who have conquered their demons are welcomed in the presence of the God of War. Each of the four doors in this area have their own specific god. So I believe there's the God of War, uh, Water, Fi- no, not Fire, Wealth. Wealth. And then the final door. Realm of the War God. Make an offering to pass. Each of the doors you must make an offering. So you got to think you have to think about what you do you have in your overly bloated inventory that corresponds to war or one of the other gods. It looks like we're supposed to put the offering in that mouth to the right of the door. Just keep in mind what they want and what you might need. How would you prove your worth to the god of war? It's not like we could just go out and join a battle to get through this door. Something related to war. Battle souvenir, maybe? What about something from the Siege of Chateau Gaillard? He's being overly specific, but technically what you can put in this mouth here is actually almost everything. Anything in your inventory can go in this mouth. Like, even this balcony key can go in the door. Other than your biochips and some very other specific items, including, like, the burned letter, any... And also, I believe, if you were actually looking at the... Oh, the lens filter is also another one. The remote control is also another one. Um, but mostly everything else can be put into one of these mounts. 
But only one thing is correct, of course. If you put something wrong in there, you simply lose it. So be careful. Now, in terms of what he was mentioning by Chateau Gaillard, remember the arrow that we picked up off of the dead guy who almost caught us? Yeah. Well, this is a symbol of war, and... Oh, I love painting! There, okay. Hmm. You put your offering in this receptacle, the door closes, and it's taken by someone or something to be judged for its worthiness. I don't believe in magic or the powers of the gods, but it may be possible that there are acolytes living in alcoves within these walls. And all they do is collect the offerings and open the doors if they're good enough. So if there's acolytes behind this, taking our item, can they see us? Do they know what we look like? Because that's kind of where... Like, this part is where the time travel idea kind of, kind of flops, because we're giving them items from the future, technically. It... By the way, this is the loudest trial ever. There's definitely something going on on the other side of this door, so obviously there's a way through. Try looking around for a lever. Yes, so we are not able to continue on through this place, but there are two things here. And also a guy. And we can also take his skull. So that gives us two skulls. What? Now, why would we find a skull in here? Well, actually, the skulls come into play in this trial. Oh. Okay, it's slightly quieter. That's more like it. The spears aren't going anymore. I'll bet you could get through the door without jamming the other serpent's head. Of course, you may not be able to get back. Maybe you should also jam the door open, just in case. Well, I have a second skull. Then, of course, we open up the... Open up the mouths, and the mouths are actually uh, timed. So they, when you click on them, they open, but they don't stay open forever. And now we're able to get through. So there are actually spears right over here, but this one stopped them. So now we're able to continue on. However, there's more spears in the way. Okay, we have a choice. We can go back the way we came, or we can see what's at the end of the hallway. I vote to go on. There may be another way to open the door down there. Which is absolutely true. Technically, we could actually leave the place entirely. However, we'll need to go back to the Chateau Gaillard and get another arrow. So I'm, I'm going to vote not doing that. All the spears. He'd be spirit alive if we ha happen to get into this. More heads as well. I can make a run for it. Or not. Okay. Now it's eerily quiet. While exploring the caverns below Chichen Itza, Agent 5 attempted to pass the Hall of Spears. He figured out how to stop the spears, but overlooked an important aspect of the puzzle. How to keep them stopped. The resulting perforations were fatal. Agent 5 does not... Spears do not like Agent 5. Apparently, the next kid had been notified. So far, 119 hints have been used. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of points. Okay, be right back when we're not, um, well, we're not like our buddies. Okay, we're back now. The spears are still going. Now, we gotta figure out how to stop these spears. But, however, we're not able to... Uh, game. I'm stuck. What the? Hello? Uh, game? Can I not go forward anymore? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No. Really? Okay, so apparently what happens here is that when you reload a save, um, you're stuck in this room forever. <laughs> Ah, oh, that is a load. Load of crap. Oh, the door's open now. 
But I have no skulls, because the skulls are over there! Okay, um... I've never had this before, honestly. Uh, okay, I'll be right back when I actually figure out what's going on here. You may be able to get the spears stopped and the door open, but not for long. Don't try going through unless you can find some way to jam the serpent's mouth open. This may sound a little gruesome, but the skull from one of those skeletons we saw? Nicely. It might just be solid enough to stop those jaws from closing. Those spears look easily sharp enough to tear through your suit, but I wouldn't worry about it. Everybody limbo! Okay, simply reloading has made the door magically appear. Get me out of here. What caused that? I have no idea. Okay. Now, you gotta remember here, what caused the spears to... You have to remember what the heads actually do. What stops the spears and what opens the doors. So, what we want to do is actually keep one skull in, but we have to keep... But we have to get rid of one skull. Now, what does this skull do again? I'm trying to remember. Okay, that makes the spears happen. I don't know what you're thinking, unless you jam those spears. Game over, man! Yeah, yeah, Arthur, okay. I'll put the skull back into the mouth and stop the spears. No problem. Now here is where everything starts getting fun. What we gotta do is we gotta take the one that has the door open, take it, and run through. So now we're stuck in here. This place gives me the creeps. Quick, try the other serpent heads. Let's find a way out of here. Yeah. So we're not able to actually get in or out. But now we have a skull with us, so we have some uh, room to actually negotiate. So, if you remember correctly, with this one, we put it in. Opens the door behind us. Okay. If you want to get to the other end of this hallway, you're going to need to jam the second set of spears instead of the entrance door. Yes, yes, Arthur, okay, so I'll put it in the other door. Head. That was some loading. Okay, so there's no more spears anymore. However, we're still stuck in here. Now would be the time to find something to jam the last door open. Now, where would we find that in this hallway? Logically, there would be a third skull somewhere. If anything. Oh! Uh, maybe this guy would be able to help. Apparently, he just got uh, skewered like we kind of did. Apparently, we can't go right. So, we can actually take our third head, skull from the spear room. Also... Great. Now we're getting somewhere. So with this third skull, we can go back and jam the last door. Well, you don't need the second set of spears jammed to get back to the entrance, so... take out the skull that's jamming them and use it to open the entrance door. Then we'll still have one skull left to jam the second door open. Yeah, if you're not really good at, uh, at switching puzzles, puzzles like these, you're gonna be here for a long, long time. Also, what we see here is actually a copper medallion. So if you did not pick up the medallion at the beginning of the of the um, cat of the caves, you can pick up a second one in the war room, which means that you would already have to do a first trip to Chateau Gaillard, come back here in order to get this. So let's just take it for the sake of taking it, and now let's continue on with the skull puzzle. So yeah, like Arthur mentioned, we do not need to jam the second set of spears in order to get this door open. So what I'm going to do is take this skull, open up, and that should open up that door. 
jamming the second set of spears isn't going to help you much if the door isn't open. Why don't you take that skull out and use it to jam the second door? Look, you need to get the second door open, right? But you've only got three skulls to do it with, so you're going to have to do some juggling. So far we've tried everything, and the only way we know to open the second door is the serpent head at the entrance that also opens the first door. So we have to get that one jammed. Now to get to it, we have to leave the first door and the first set of spears jammed. So that leaves only one possible skull that we can take with us. The one that's now jamming the second set of spears. Once we get the second door open, we'll have to figure out a way to get those spears jammed again, but we can cross that bridge when we come to it. He really holds your hand in a very good way, I have to say. Okay, we're almost there. If we use the last skull to jam the second door, then all we have to do is find a way to stop the second set of spears, and we're through. Well, if you remember, Gage, when we opened the first door from the entrance, it also opened the second door. So that's the one we need to jam with the last skull. Okay. One last skull. Let's put it in the one that opens the door. Great. The first door is already jammed, so we don't need to be jamming it from the middle of the hallway. That gives us another skull to jam the last set of spears. Right. So we don't do anything with this one, because that jams the first set of spears. This one opens both sets of doors. So let's head back into the hallway and take that one that's jamming the first door open and simply switch it so that it's taking out the first set, the second set of spears. Shoot. Open up. There we go. Alright. And now we're through. Now what is our reward for doing the, all of this? Oh, we get a nice room at the end of it. Check out this guy. Tezcatlipoca was one of the most feared gods. His name means Smoking Mirror. They called him that because in addition to being a fierce warrior, he was also known for his pranks and illusions. Kind of the Mayan Doug Henning. Is there something I can... Oh, there we go. The war god Tezcatlipoca. Alright. Is that it, though? Nope. That piece in the middle of the altar looks like it could be taken out. Well, you didn't come here just to look at pretty pictures. I think we did. This chamber seems to be set up as a prayer room. There's an image of the god directly opposite his altar, but no signs of blood suggest that the altar is used in sacrifices, which means that it's probably used for more benign offerings. If I had a nose, I believe I would smell incense. Alrighty then. So, our reward for this is getting access to this altar, and also... An obsidian block. This is going to come in handy at the final portions of this time period. Okay, let's get out of here. Honestly, the war skull juggling puzzle is... Honestly, I think it's kind of clever. Especially when you're not able to actually... Well... Make it easier on yourself. Like... That was the solution, and theres I don't think there's any easier way of doing it. Alright, we're done with war. So let's do one more trial. Let's do the one adjacent to us. Or actually... Let's actually save that one for next time. Let's actually continue on and do the ones on the right. Or the left. I have to remember where each of the things are. Pretty much, pretty much. Alright. Hey, nice door. Didn't I see Bob Vila make one of these on this old pyramid? Stop thinking about Bob Vila, jeez. Alright, so, what do we got here? Let's get our translate biochip. The inventory system doesn't have a really good way of scrolling, but holding down the directional buttons 
is probably your best bet. So we have those who, rep who will represent the god of wealth must turn their backs to worldly possessions and lower their heads in humility. Hmm. And of course, Realm of the Wealth God, make an offering. Arthur, what you got? So what do you give to the god who has everything? Hey, maybe it's not what you're giving him so much as what you're giving up. Followers of the Wealth God would probably honor him by giving him something valuable. Valuable, you say? Well, we just have that kind of thing. It's something that kind of just glazed over at the end of Chateau Gaillard, but we did pick up some coins. I wonder what the Acolyte has to say about these coins. He's gonna go like, where did these come from? What are these? I shall paint this place made with gold! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> oh, I love when things are awful like this. Okay. And actually, this is one the one trial where you actually don't give up the item. Since you have multiple gold coins, you just have to give up one of them, and you have no idea how many gold coins you actually have. But yeah, okay. Gold, I bathe in it. The inscription above the door said that the followers of the God of Wealth must turn their backs to worldly possessions and lower their heads in humility. It sounds like it's meant figuratively, but could it also be literal? Perhaps. But let's think about that after we get out of this tunnel. Ooh, rope reach. Very dangerous. You go first. Okay. Oh, afraid of heights, huh? Well, just think of it as summer camp. There's even a river down there. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, you can't actually see it. Oh, come on. Don't whip out on me now. We have to get across, and as much as you look like the FTD florist in that suit, I don't think you're about to sprout wings and fly across. If the inscription is taken literally, Wealth may be referring to the gold room. We stand with our back to the room and look down at the opposite wall of the chasm. What will we see? Now, remember what Arthur just said there about taking it literally, because we're going to be doing that. Not right now, but a little bit later. Isn't Rope Bridge an oxymoron? I suppose. Anyway. Time for a Rope Bridge adventure. And apparently you have to click again when you're in the middle. Okay. Cross the bridge. Man, this place looks like something Wayne Newton would wear around his neck. Yeah, it's strangely colored, I will say. Oh, there's the river. That's nice. Yeah. It's actually kind of... It has frames to it. So it's like it's actually flowing. I kind of like that. So, this is the wealth room. Let's see what's inside. Um, it's weird that everything is strangely quiet now. This must be the punishment for dishonoring the god of wealth. Remember, turn your back to worldly possessions and lower your head in humility. Next time, try turning around and looking down after crossing the bridge instead of being blinded by all the shiny, sparkly things. But it's so shiny and golden in here. I like it. So, yeah, this is... well, this is our punishment. We are stuck in here. And the only way th out of here, unfortunately... Like, th technically, this isn't a death. We are not killed in here, because... Unlike the others where we've, well, we've technically died, we're just kind of stuck in here. The only way out is to recall, and then do everything around over, over and over again. Maybe this is why that you're actually given the gold coins again, so you're actually able to retry. Which is kind of a good thing, because otherwise we'd be going all the way through Chateau Gaillard, 
to get more gold coins, and that's not fun. Okay, meet you right on the other side of that rock slab. So, after making the long road of repetition in order to get back to this bridge, you actually lose this help message if you go across and back again. It looks like we're going to have to find some way to climb down to that lower passage. Well, some rope would help. Or maybe we could tie a few bed sheets together. Yes, so, if you're over on the other side of the bridge, and you look down, like so, you will notice that there's another entrance far below. There's a little plateau here, it's kind of hard to see, but here is the outline of the door. Arthur surprisingly has nothing to say about this. I'm wondering if that's just me, or overall, this is what the game actually does. It just says, hey, look down, and you'll notice this. So let's get back across this bridge. I swear he also says something else other than that help message inside of the gold room, but I can't get it to trigger for some reason. Arthur's being very testy today. But anyway, like he said, we need to use our rope. Bingo. Alright. Now we're able to get down to the lower platform. to this other color cavern here, which has a symbol over it. I'm really surprised that Arthur doesn't say anything about it, but as you can see, if you look up, we can see that the gold room is far above where we are, and we can use the rope in order to get out of here. I honestly thought that the effect in this cave was actually really cool back in the day. It's just like, it, it's covered in stone, like, stone. Particularly, this kind of stone, which is jade. So here is our second block, and also another god. Hopefully we can be able to translate and see what that god is. The wealth god, Tepeyotl. Tep... Tepeolotl? Tepeolotl. A little? Tepeolotl? This shouldn't be time for enunciation time for me. But, yeah. Here is the Wealth God. Surprisingly, Arthur has nothing to say about... Surpri Arthur has been very silent for the last little while for me. But yeah, the Wealth God he doesn't have anything to say about. Honestly, this is supposed to be the last trial you do before the final one, but this one is a lot shorter, so I decided to put it in here. But now that we have two out of three blocks, we can head on to the third trial. I am actually going to save you the trouble of going all the way out of here, so I'm going to meet you back at the entrance to the Wealth God trial. Okie dokie. And of course, clicking on the door, we can just simply leave whenever we want. Now we return to the caves. Now we can head back down to where the war room is and look to right for our third trial. It's going to be over these steps. But we'll stop here, because I believe I've been going on for far too long. So see you next time, everyone, as we tackle the third trial. The trial of the Water God. See you next time, everyone.